refuse to go to the moon in this decade and do the other things, not because they are easy, but because they are hard. ¿Realmente fue un gran paso para la humanidad? O tal vez no. Desde el mismo instante del alunizaje, se alzaron voces que afirmaban que todo había sido un elaborado fraude, que el hombre no había llegado a la luna. Pero esos gritos jamás han sido escuchados por los especialistas de la NASA. Los apoloescépticos aseguran que los Estados Unidos no podían permitirse fracasar ante el mundo y en plena Guerra Fría en su conquista de la Luna. Además, añaden sin rubor que en aquel histórico viaje ocurrieron más cosas que impidieron la llegada a nuestro satélite. Algunos estudiosos incluso han intentado demostrar que Armstrong pudo dar su pequeño gran paso, no a medio millón de kilómetros de la Tierra sino en otras llanuras polvorientas que se encuentran apenas a 150 kilómetros de los carteles luminosos de Las Vegas. Concretamente, en unos estudios cinematográficos construidos en secreto en el desierto de Nevada, en la mítica Área 51. Sombras extrañas, banderas que ondean donde no hay aire, anomalías en el terreno y en la luz. Estos son tan solo algunos de los elementos que hacen sospechar a los escépticos. Lo cierto es que desde el momento del alunizaje, todo lo referente a los astronautas estuvo rodeado de un velo de gran secreto propio del ambiente militar. Un secreto que dura hasta nuestros días. En la estación de seguimiento de Robledo de Chabela, en Madrid, ocurrieron cosas extrañas en aquella noche histórica. Cosas que algunos veteranos periodistas no han podido olvidar. Nos invitan, voy a poner con comillas, nos invitan a salir del, de ese habitáculo, pequeño habitáculo. Ahí sí noté cierto, cierto en el mismo de que fuéramos pronto, que no había por qué. Porque se dice, el que tenga ganas de tomar un refresco que salga y el que no, porque se quede aquí. No había por qué. Y esa es la gran incógnita que yo tengo desde esa noche. ¿Qué pasó en estos cuatro o cinco minutos y por qué salimos de allí? Los monitores tenían en ese momento un, un plano donde se veían los volcancitos y tal, con la nave avanzando muy cerquita. Y antes de llegar a, a posarse, ahí antes, nada, unos segundos, no sé cuántos, ahí se corta. Y cuando vuelve, la nave se ha posado en, en, en la luna. En septiembre de 2001, el astronauta Buzz Aldrin llegó a perder los nervios y agredió sin mediar palabra a un periodista poloescéptico que le abordó gritándole «Júreme ante la Biblia que usted ha estado en la luna». La respuesta fue «Este puñetazo digno de un boxeador». El reciente anuncio del presidente Bush de que el hombre volverá a la luna en 2018 ha sorprendido a muchos. Tal vez entonces conozcamos toda la verdad. From an analytical standpoint, photographic anomalies have to be sought out with an understanding of lighting and shadows. The most straightforward is simple. When objects are lit solely by the sun, as all the scenes on the moon were said to be, after all, lighting equipment was not only impractical, it was unnecessary in bright sunlight, then all shadows, regardless of the landscape, will run parallel with one another and never intersect, as shown by this example. 
in these seldom seen photographs, obtained from a rarely used auxiliary NASA archival site, it is clear that these scenes were lit with artificial light. These shadows, which are cast at different angles, are evidence that a second light source is being used. In addition, the sun would not cause an isolated hot spot like this, only an artificial light would. Again, intersecting shadows and another hot spot. And again. And again. It is simply impossible for this picture to have been taken with sunlight on the moon. Here, the shadows are shown to be as black as pitch. And yet here, Completely in a shadow, the astronaut is lit up like a Christmas tree. How can this be? Or this, on the shadow side of the lunar module. In this magnification of an Apollo photograph, a rock, very likely a paper mache prop because of the crease here, is categorized with the letter C. In later releases of the same picture, the letter is gone, probably airbrushed out. Here, a crosshair, which was burned directly into the image from the film plate, and thus should always appear on top of the objects in the photograph, appears behind the object in this scene, clearly revealing a composite of two pictures into one. Someone apparently forgot to create a burn crater underneath the lunar module's 10,000-pound thrust engine, despite the fact that during ground tests there was a real concern for the vehicle falling into the hole the engine created as it descended. Here is a Norman Rockwell depiction drawn just two years earlier based on the latest specifications and scientific data. In these enlargements, it looks as though the lunar module was simply placed there not even one speck of moon dust on the landing pod. As a result, all subsequent flights had to have the same discrepancy, which was explained away by the effect of no atmosphere. And what about stars? On the moon, with no atmosphere, they must have been quite a sight to behold. Yet there is seldom any mention of them, if ever, by any of the astronauts on any of the missions. Undoubtedly, creating a mural with all the constellations properly placed in the sky would have been virtually impossible to create accurately, much less realistically. A competent amateur astronomer would have been able to call attention to the slightest error in measurement. The answer? Not to talk about the stars. Ever. In their post-flight press conference, it was the only question to which Neil Armstrong responded with an absence of memory. When you looked up at the sky, could you actually see the stars and the solar corona in spite of the glare? We were never able to see stars from the lunar surface or on the daylight side of the moon by eye without looking through the optics. Uh, I don't recall during the period of time that we were prepping the solar corona what, uh, what stars we could see. I don't remember seeing any. Then there's the flag blowing in the wind, at least twice, on the atmosphereless moon. We can only guess that most of the missions were staged inside for fear of possible aerial or satellite reconnaissance from an unfriendly nation. The backpacks, designed for one-sixth gravity, must have had the cooling systems removed to allow for movement without falling over. With very near and hot studio lighting, that left one hot astronaut inside. Assuming that it was the astronauts inside, after all, their faces were always covered. The necessary mammoth amounts of air conditioning were probably responsible for the air current. Here the editor cuts to a still shot of the flag, just as the effect becomes noticeable. Here it is unchecked. This rare clip attained decades ago, was never re-released with the inevitable increase in experience and scrutiny. To demonstrate one-sixth gravity, a bouncy, floaty feel to the astronaut's movements would be similarly achieved with relative simplicity. Slow motion. You are viewing the scenes as they aired more than 30 years ago. Now let's look at them with the speed doubled. It becomes discernible that they are, in fact, in Earth's gravity and are no more leaving the ground than they would on Earth. 
It is clear from these rarely seen color television pictures that the crew of Apollo 11 brought a high resolution color video camera with them on their mission. Yet the only pictures broadcast live from the moon's surface were these from a low definition black and white camera. In fact, the networks complained because in addition to this, they were forced to shoot the images second generation off of a projection TV of the technology of 30 years ago and were not even allowed to take a direct feed, which further degraded the quality and clarity of the images. Perhaps this was precisely what NASA and the federal government had in mind. After all, it was a first, regardless of where they were. Better to open up their debut mission with fuzzy pictures and numerous blackouts rather than show too much revealing detail of a false scene that was yet unproven. And finally, the element that seals their fate. Of all the footage of Apollo 11 requested from NASA over a five-year period, one gem was discovered just before the completion of this documentary. An old reel received by mistake. It contains the raw or unedited footage of the crew of Apollo 11, Michael Collins, Edwin Aldrin Jr. and Neil Armstrong, staging part of their mission for nearly an hour in living color with exceptionally clear behind the scenes audio of conversations discussing the techniques used to achieve a disingenuous picture depicting the earth at a distance. Here, during another segment, also intended to air after review, Neil Armstrong falsely explains to the viewers how the shot is attained by putting the camera's lens to the window's glass, as it would have to be if they were the claimed distance away from the Earth. We only have one uh, window that uh, has a view of the Earth, and it's filled up with the TV camera. If the window was completely filled up with a TV camera, as he stated, then an astronaut's arm would not be able to get between the camera and the window, as it obviously does here in this outtake. South America becomes invisible just off beyond the Terminator or inside the shadow. You can also notice how the astronaut operating the camera reacted to the mistake by attempting to pan away from it. This is a segment that they believed wasn't even being recorded, much less suitable for broadcasts, for the lens was being zoomed out and the scene was being changed to that of an interior of the astronauts at work and apparently the stop button popped back up on the recorder without notice. Here is the diffused work light that they used to see camera controls but not throw light onto the spacecraft's wall. Here they remove part of the crescent insert Finally, the iris is opened up and you can see the real location of the camera and the very bright and near Earth out the window. Here is the slate for the 19th of July and the same shot of trickery on the 19th of July and then the 20th and the 